Okay, in this example, we're told we have air flowing steadily between two sections in a long straight portion of 10.2 centimeter diameter pipe. So we have pipe like this, call that section one and call this section two. Air is flowing that way. And we're told the temperature and pressure at the inlet uh, are given. So this is 27 degrees Celsius and the pressure there is 590 kilopascals absolute. And the outlet temperature 10 degrees C and the outlet pressure is 26 kilopascals absolute. We're asked to calculate the change in specific internal energy so that means that we're going to want to uh, calculate delta U which would be U2 minus U1. The change in the specific enthalpy between the inlet and outlet so that'd be delta H so H2 minus H1 uh, the change in the density between the inlet and outlet, so rho 2 minus rho 1, or let me write it as delta rho to be consistent. And the change in specific entropy between the inlet and outlet, so delta S, that would be S2 minus S1. And would you expect compressibility effects to be important for this flow? So state any major assumptions you make. Okay, so one of the first things I'll do is I'll assume that I'm dealing with a perfect gas. We're dealing with temperature differences that aren't all that large. So, you know, 17 degrees Celsius or 17 Kelvin is the temperature difference. So uh, even though we know for an ideal gas, the specific heats vary with temperature in general, over such a small temperature range, it's, it's totally reasonable to assume that the specific heats are essentially constant. So an ideal gas with a constant specific heat is called a perfect gas. And so the delta U, for example, we could calculate as C sub V times T2 minus T1, right? In general, the CV would be a function of temperature for an ideal gas, but over a small range in temperatures, it's totally fine to assume that that CV is a constant. If we look up the specific heat at constant volume in this temperature range, from a thermodynamics table, you'll find that it comes out to be um, 717 joules per kilogram Kelvin for the CV. And then the delta T will be the 27 minus 10. Now, typically you would convert those to Kelvin and then subtract it. But since uh, one a change of one degree Kelvin and a change of one degree Celsius, they're exactly the same. So I can simply just put in, um, oops, sorry, it would be, I'm doing a, it should be T, T2 minus T1. So T2 is 10 degrees C and T1 is 27 degrees C. Again, you know, I could convert these to Kelvin. Let me, let me just do that to show you. So this would be what, 283 Kelvin and this other one would be 300 Kelvin. You still get the same, the same delta value, right? And then when you do the calculation, this comes out to be minus 12.2 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's our delta U. Now the ch for the change in specific enthalpy, again for an ideal gas with constant specific heats, it would be Cp times T2 minus T1. And if you look up the specific heat at constant pressure for air at this temperature, it's 1004 joules per kilogram Kelvin. We're dealing with the same delta in temperature, this, this delta is what, minus 17 Kelvin. And then when you plug in those numbers, this comes out to be minus 17.1 kilojoules per Kelvin. So that's our change in specific enthalpy. The change in the density we can find using the ideal gas law. Let me give myself a little more space here. Okay that up a little bit. So to find the density at uh, section 2, I'm going to use the ideal gas law. Rho 2 would just be P2 over RT2. And then the same at section 1. And when I'm using the ideal gas law, I just need to make sure I'm using absolute temperatures and pressures. So here the absolute pressures are given here, 590 kilopascals at section 1. 26 kilopascals at section two. So those are the values I would use here. 
For the temperatures, I need to make sure I'm actually using absolute temperatures here. So this one would be 300 Kelvin. This one would be 283 Kelvin. So I need to use those absolute temperatures down in here. The gas constant for air is 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin. That can be looked up in a thermodynamics table. So we can plug those numbers in and what we'd get is the density at 2 comes out to be 1.56 kilograms per cubic meter. Density at 1 is 8.03 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. So the delta in densities is minus 6.46 kilograms per cubic meter. So that's our change in density. Now the last one is the change in specific entropy. Again, since we're dealing with small temperature changes, we can assume that we're dealing with a perfect gas. And the change in entropy, you can uh, just go back to your thermodynamics notes for this derivation. It looks like the following. Oops, sorry. You'll hopefully remember this expression from thermodynamics. So the change in specific, enth spe specific entropy for a perfect gas is Cp times the natural log of T2 over T1. Again, these have to be absolute temperatures minus the gas constant R times the natural log of the absolute pressure ratio. So again, these have to be absolute pressures. And we've already uh, talked about what the values are for each of these things. So if you plug those numbers in, this comes out to be 428. Uh, joules per kilogram. So the entropy increases as we go downstream. Okay, so that gives us uh, parts A through D. Now part E asks, would you expect compressibility effects to be important for this flow? So to figure that out, we'll just take a look at how the density changes. So remember, if it's um, incompressible, then you wouldn't expect a large change in the density. If it's compressible, then the density would change significantly. We, we do certainly see a change in the density. And in fact, if you look at that change in density compared to the density that we start with, just to make it a, to give us a reference, like, you know, if I, if I tell you that the change in density is 6.5, I don't know whether that's bigger or not compared to the initial density. If the initial density is 100 kilograms per cubic meters, then that change in density would be small relative to it. So this is why I'm, I'm taking the change in density relative to the density I'm starting with to see how big of a change it is compared to what we started with. So it's, it'd be 6.46 kilograms per cubic meter. And then what we started with was 8.03 kilograms per cubic meter. And so you see that this is, uh, um, sorry, uh, 0. Point, minus 0. Point 805. So the density drops by about 80%, which is very significant. That's a huge change in density. So again, the idea here is that the change in density relative to what we started with, it decreases, that's the negative, by about 81%. So compressibility effects would certainly be important here. Okay, so this example was really just uh, trying to get you re-familiar with thermodynamics, just how one calculates changes in uh, internal energy, specific enth so specific internal energy, specific enthalpy, using the ideal gas law, how to find changes in uh, specific entropy. Um, that's really what we were looking for in this example. A couple things to keep in mind. Uh, you're always better off just using absolute temperatures and absolute pressures. Anything that's derived from the ideal gas law, we need to use absolute pressures and absolute temperatures. So here, you know, absolute pressure, absolute temperature, same thing here. Here, you don't have to worry about absolute temperature because you're taking a temperature difference. Since it's a delta T, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, the delta T in degrees Celsius or delta T in degrees or uh, in Kelvin because the delta temperature is gonna be the same regardless. So that's, that's not critical when you're doing uh, a difference. Okay, we'll go ahead and end the example there.